I have a confession. I love female characters. Sam! But not for the reason you think. Female characters, when written correctly, can offer something fresh and new to a series that is usually testosterone-fueled and male-dominated. I mean, in a world with half the population being female, I can only imagine that maybe, possibly, hypothetically, that some of the characters in media would be women. I know, hot take. But no other genre of media is truly capable of highlighting the strengths and weaknesses of men and women than the action genre. And upon rewatching some of the most recent Mission Impossible films with my family, there is one character that really checks all my boxes when it comes to writing a female character. My favorite character in the series, Ilsa Faust. For the uninitiated, Ilsa Faust was first introduced in Mission Impossible Rogue Nation in 2015. Ilsa is the yang to Ethan's yin. Ilsa is always trying to fight her way out of this life of espionage alone while Ethan cannot stop diving into this life with the help of his friends. Mahler perfectly describes why these two complement each other thematically in a recent EFAP. And now this film is about how she's taking drastic measures to get her life back and she's watching someone have his life dragged back into his work all the time to fuck with him and he's desperately trying to keep her safe and away. It's like the opposite of what she's doing and how much he has to sacrifice. And this mirror image does not stop there. To use an analogy from Mission Impossible Fallout, in battle, Ilsa is like a scalpel and Ethan's like a hammer. Ethan is a brawler and is known for using the most direct method to get from point A to B, even if that means running you over to make that happen. Ilsa, on the other hand, is like a bird of prey, watching from afar and waiting for the best time to strike. She does not try to force an action that will jeopardize the mission or herself. Ethan is an on-the-fly improvisational agent with a streak of roguish behavior. He shows signs of frustration, anger, and bafflement in many situations. Contrasting heavily with Ilsa, Ethan is a maverick. Let's see what I did there. Just like another one of my favorite characters, Ethan is like Garrus Vicarian. He does not take bad orders. He will go against his organization and his country's government to save the world. If saving the world means giving up his wife and the good graces of his country's government, then so be it. He doesn't need his government. His government needs him. Ilsa is stoic, calm, cold, and focused. She does not expend energy on needlessly emoting or inane pissing contests. However, she is very linear-minded. She is often told what she must do by her superiors, and while she may protest, she doesn't exhibit any real form of insubordination with both Solomon Lane or Director Attlee of MI6. She is told what she must do to get her life back, and she does so nearly unflinchingly. And even when she had a chance to escape and live off the grid, Ilsa felt the need to go back to MI6 so she could find a way to have her name cleared. The way she carries herself is satisfying. Especially in Rogue Nation, Ilsa carries a level of mystique about her. She moves with sensuality and grace in every scene she's in. Now, I'm not saying this because she's pretty. I'm saying this because it highlights one of a female character's best assets, her charisma. Let's roll it back and talk about some evolution. I know this is going to be a bit controversial in 2023, but here goes. Men and women are different. We evolved differently from each other. Yeah, I know. Go ahead. I'll be here all week. Men evolved to have thicker skin, quicker reflexes, bigger muscles, and higher pain thresholds. Women, on the other hand, do not have these traits, but with time, women have learned to be emotionally intelligent. So for a well-written female character, she should be emotionally intelligent. In this scene in Rogue Nation, Ilsa is basically half-naked in a bathing suit upon Ethan and Benji's arrival for two reasons. One, she's training to hold her breath for the water vault heist, and two, it's to ignite positive emotions within Ethan and Benji to get them to trust her. In this line of work, he really shouldn't have trusted her in any situation, no matter how fine she is, but that's besides the point. It's been damn near scientifically proven that we as humans are more likely to assign positive traits to someone when we find them attractive. This is called the halo effect. I mean, how can you say no to somebody when your loins are literally screaming at you? Like, it's, it's hard, man. It's hard.
It's hard. Literally. <laughs> Let's now take a look at Ilsa in combat, but first let me show you how most modern movies write women in combat poorly with this cup of slop called Black Widow. Look at this clip. That's molten bullshit. Florence Pugh's last recorded weight was 53 kilograms or 116 pounds. I can bench press that with 15 reps and 3 sets. The Widows are confirmed to only be highly trained, not super strong or extremely durable. This means that physically they are basically on the same level as our woman of the hour, Miss Ilsa Faust. The amount of force needed to break a man's neck is about 1,000 foot pounds of torque, which equals a little over one unit of horsepower. In short, Yelena would need to be as strong as a literal horse to snap this guy's neck. Even with the running start, that's not enough energy to break this guy's neck. That leg sweep is also nonsense. You're telling me the petite Florence Pugh with very little muscle mass tripped up this dude that's almost double my size and kitted up in armor, gear, and guns? Nah, you're not lying to me. You're lying to yourself. Watch an MMA fight between a man and a woman and see what happens when a woman tries to fight a man. An untrained man can absolutely trounce a trained female fighter. The physiological differences are enlightening. Piotr had a clear size and strength advantage that allowed him to fight from the outside, but when the distance was closed, he'd easily secure the takedowns. The end of the first round saw Piotr on the bottom with a locked-in inverted triangle. Round two begins and it's more of the same. This poor blonde girl just didn't have the attributes required to take on Lasowski. He took him down once again in the second round and easily moved into the mount position. He then landed some ground and pound that warranted the referee's intervention. These are the kinds of things I have to research when writing a believable story. <laughs> Neck breaking and women getting beat up. In comparison, Ilsa fights more tactically. Look at how she fights the Bone Doctor in Rogue Nation. The Bone Doctor's hits are heavy and almost debilitating to her. When he strikes Ilsa, she is staggered and has a hard time recovering. Because of the physical differences between the two fighters, Ilsa has to think strategically about when she should strike. She can't just wave her knife around willy-nilly because the Bone Doctor isn't some low-level goon. What allows Ilsa to take down the Bone Doctor is that she parries his attack waiting for him to strike and grappling him using her full body weight to disable him so she can deal the fatal blow. And again, another example is in Fallout when Ilsa has to fight Solomon Lane. Solomon easily grabs Ilsa and ties her up with very little difficulty. Ilsa is insanely trained and still got tied up. She was incapable of putting up much of a fight, so much so that her getting tied up happens off screen. When she's freed, she has to fight Solomon strategically by precisely targeting parts of his body when she has the chance rather than dealing direct body blows. And look at what happens when 171 pound Solomon Lane punches Ilsa in the face. <laughs> It takes Benji kicking Solomon from behind to free Ilsa and allowed her to choke him unconscious. The way female characters fight is fantastic and all, but let's look at the way modern female characters carry themselves. Let's take Captain Marvel for example. Both Captain Marvels. Carol Danvers is a wholly unlikable character. Come on. Yes. Yes. Verify. CTC 39. GRXB 1600. I'm fine. Thank you for asking. You didn't even give him a chance to ask if you were okay. I know he's supposed to be the bad guy and all, but come on. He's not the bad guy yet. Every character she interacts with, she can't seem to help but be smug and up her own ass the entire time. Nice scuba suit. You lighting up, honey, huh? Got a smile for me? Freak. 
what, he told you to smile so you steal his bike? You being able to ride a motorcycle is a plot hole in and of itself. Now let's look at her multiversal counterpart. Oh, before we vote, if you got anything serious to say, now's the time. Yeah, I do. It's encouraging you're worried about. Do you seriously think I'm a bigger threat than the Scarlet Witch? Oh, we can handle your little witch if she decides to dreamwalk. Why are you so cocky for no reason? And look at her reaction when Mr. Fantastic dies. What the hell is that reaction? It looks less like her brother in arms and friend just died and more like Wanda just called her a word that rhymes with runt. However, look at this interaction between Ilsa and Ethan. How calm and even Ilsa is. How Ilsa reacts to Ethan telling her that he's standing in the way of her freedom. Why did they send you? This is how I prove my loyalty. This is how I come home. But you are out. You are free. We are never free. I spent two years undercover with Lane. To them, I'm as much of a threat as he is. I kill him, or I never stop running. Now tell me where he is. I can't help you. I will get to him one way or another. Please don't make me go through you. She doesn't yell at Ethan or make some sarcastic remark. She only wishes Ethan wouldn't get in the way of her goal. My point here is that these behaviors are pitiful parodies of what the writer thinks a man behaves like. Arrogant, aggressive, snarky, spiteful, petty, and inappropriately indifferent. When really, you should be writing your female characters to be the epitome of what makes women so great. Elegant, supportive, fair, sensual, loving, watchful, and most importantly, caring. Ilsa Faust will join the chosen few female characters I will cherish forever because they are unabashedly female. Tally Zora, Lucy, Black Widow, preface 4 that is, Amy Rose, and now Ilsa Faust. I just hope she's not actually fucking dead. Thank you all for watching and for your continued support. I hope you enjoyed the video, and if you'd like to support me and check out a novel from an indie author, hit the link in the description and take a look at my sci-fi military series, Blur Havoc. It would be much appreciated. Thanks again for watching, and I will see you next time.